This week has seen the death and the funeral, well, the checking out, the giving up the ghost and the funeral of R.C. Sproul, the Reformed theologian, Reformed evangelical. We did not have a high view of R.C. Sproul theologically in many respects. He sprinkled infants and called that baptism. He was covenant theology. He subscribed to the extreme Calvinistic view that God only made two covenants, one with Abraham and uh, one with Adam. We do not agree with any of this. It has no scriptural support. He was also a preterist. He denied the prophetic significance of contemporary events in the Middle East to a large degree. We do not see things his way, and his cessationism was completely unpalpable and not biblically supportable. He was wrong on many, many issues, many issues. But we must pay tribute to him for two things. One, on the inerrancy of Scripture, he stood up to the liberal theological establishment and to evangelicals who compromised with the liberal theological establishment. He stood up for the inerrancy of the Word of God. We must pay tribute to his memory for having done that. Secondly, on the ecumenical issue, he opposed other Reformed scholars, such as J.I. Packer. He opposed Bill Bright of Campus Crusades for Christ, and he opposed Chuck Colson, a man who behaved like a Judas, betraying the gospel of Jesus Christ with evangelicals and Catholics together. R.C. Sproul was at the forefront of opposing the ecumenical sellout to Rome. He showed in courage, he showed integrity, and he showed a firm biblical anchorage in the essentials of the gospel, in contrast to the false gospel of Rome. He went against J.I. Packer, he went against the late Chuck Colson, a man who was anointed by Satan to deceive the church, and he went against Bill Bright, who undid so much of the good he had previously done in these compromises with the Roman Catholic Church, recognizing it as Christian, and saying we don't need to evangelize Roman Catholics. Mr. Sproul, in this area, is to be commended, and we need to thank God for the stance he took concerning the ecumenical issue and inerrancy. No, we did not agree with him on many things. He taught much error. Certainly his cessationism, certainly his preterism, certainly his covenant theology, certainly his infant baptism. We agreed with none of that. But in the book of Revelation, when Jesus addressed the seven churches, and none of the churches are people, they're not institutions. He pointed out the good as well as what was wrong. And when we speak of J.I. Packer, let us also remember the good, not just where we disagreed, but where we agreed. As much as we are opposed to so much of what he thought and taught, we do have to thank the Lord for the courage and integrity he displayed in other areas concerning ecumenism and the inerrancy of the Word of God. He went to be with the Lord. Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio, here with James Jacob Prash. Jacob, one of the believers asked about R.C. Sproul and is there any danger in what he teaches? There are two R.C. Sprouls, father and son. Let's take the son first. The son toyed with the uh, Y2K nonsense and the gospel and the stars nonsense, but more recently has been found in sexual immorality, going on websites for uh, people actually looking to commit adultery, going on websites for married people looking to have sexual flings with others who they're not married to. That was the son. This was in recent months. He was basically exposed for what he, he does 
in, in the moral sphere. The father is a Calvinist and a cessationist, a bedfellow of John MacArthur. The father also embraces infant baptism, to the best of my knowledge, which is incompatible with what MacArthur claims to believe. Uh, I have a very, very low view of R.C. Sproul Sr., theologically. His only virtue is that he's not ecumenical. Um, his Calvinism and his cessationism are false, his infant baptism is false, and his son is a immoral. The son is an immoral person, uh, and, and theologically very, very flaky. This is R.C. Sproul. Uh, he's somebody you're better off not just paying no attention to. He shared the platform with John MacArthur at John MacArthur's attack on all Charismatics and Pentecostals, where they were not just attacking hyper-Pentecostal extremism or ultra-Charismatic extremism, that is Neo-Montanism. They were attacking belief in gifts of the Spirit. He was teaching error. But at the same time, he was attacking people like Chuck Smith, who used to be his friend, and he was attacking all people who were not cessationists. He's teaching with the backing of Phil Johnson, Jimmy DeYoung, and others, that it's possible to take the mark of the beast, worship the Antichrist, and still be saved and go to heaven. This is John MacArthur sharing a platform with R.C. Sproul. Such people are not worth the time of day. There is much false teachers on one extreme as the money-preaching televangelists are on the other. Have nothing to do with them. Sproul is bad news, very bad. Calvinism is wrong, but he takes Calvinism to the extreme of even sprinkling infants. Uh, he's a sad man. I wouldn't pay any attention to him, and I don't think you should either. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless and thank you for your question. Thank you, Jacob. <laughs> hey, do you want to go into that he's an amillennial as well, or that's a moot point? Yeah, I could say that. Okay. Okay. I'd also point out that he that even contrary to MacArthur, R.C. Sproul is a millennial. He follows the Augustinian mindset of spiritualizing away the millennium. One of the things you'll find about people like Sproul is they are theologically Gnostic. No matter what they say, they're theologically Gnostic. Many Calvinists are theologically Gnostic. They spiritualize the text out of context to give it a different meaning. For instance, when they see Israel, they spiritualize it into the church. Unless, of course, it's a curse. The curses are for the Jews. The blessings of Israel is for the church. They just spiritualize the text out of context. Spiritualize away the millennium. <clears throat> well, are the seven years literal? Yes. Are the three and a half years literal? Yes. Are the thousand years literal? No. <laughs> They're inconsistent in their hermeneutic. Again, there's something fundamentally wrong with people like R.C. Sproul and the way they mishandle the scriptures.